Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a recent and currently reading video. Uh, before I get talking about the book sale, I just wanted to briefly mention that the long list for the inaugural Booktube Prize has been announced and that was announced by Robert over at Barter Hordes. I will link his channel down below as well as the um, link to the Booktube Prize website. Um, and uh, so that is exciting and I am thrilled with the long list that he has come up with and uh, as you know um, I've talked about before in my goals for this year I am participating as a judge um, for the book two prize I will be judging this first round um, so there will be some books that I'll be reading over the next six weeks or so that I can't really talk about um, while we're in the midst of judging this round and then I'll just save up my thoughts and feelings about each of the books in the group that I'm judging and discuss them in the in the end after I've um, submitted my rankings and all that sort of thing. So stay tuned to hear about what I thought about uh, the particular group that I am judging for the booktube prize. Very 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 exciting stuff. Okay, so let's get into the books. I finally finished some books. It's been, a, it's been a rough month, guys. It's been real rough. I've finished four books total um, so far this month. It is January 27th today as I'm filming this. So that is not a um, particularly good amount of books for me um, in my typical reading pace or whatever. Uh, but it has been a busy month, there's been a lot going on, and um, the books that I have completed um, have been, some of them have been long ones, so that's part of the problem as well. Anyway, let's just get into the individual books. Before I talk about the books that I have completed, I should mention that I did um, bail on one book this month, and that is The Spire by William Golding. This is a book that I was participating in a buddy read at the beginning of the month, with a whole bunch of um, folks both on and off booktube um, and it is a uh, an older novel um, I can't even remember the year it was published but uh, it's it's not a contemporary novel William Golding of course being the author of the classic book The Lord of the Flies uh, but The Spire is about a man who is a uh, oh I can't remember his exact title but he's a a minister of some kind in the church in England and he um, has had a vision from God or whatever that his church needs to build this spire this steeple uh, and the book is all about him trying to get this this spire built on his church and half of the people that um, are members of his church or our officials in his church are against the idea and he struggles with the architect and the builders and this it's just all about building this spire and I read um, the first four chapters of the book and I just was not connecting it just wasn't a story for me it was a very um, it was a very cerebral novel in that not much happens in terms of plot and it's I suppose I'm um, trying to say something about the church and religion, but it was not anything that was connecting with me. So I just decided to let it go and move on to something else. So uh, what I did complete this month is the first thing I completed, and I have a few notes over here that I'm going to refer to just so I don't forget anything. I finished an ebook, Gulliver's Travels, which is a classic off the list of classics that I've been trying to uh, read my way through. Um, I did not like it. I thought it was terrible. It is a satire and it's um, everybody knows what Gulliver's Travels is about so I'm not going to go into it and neither, let's just leave it at the fact that I didn't enjoy it. I buddy read it. I buddy read it with Patrice um, and neither one of us was particularly enamored of it. But I can cross it off my list so that's a positive. I then finished an audiobook, The Stand by Stephen King, which is a reread for me. Um, and I was listening to the uncut version of it, which was 48 hours long, which is why it took me so long to finish. Uh, but it was an excellent um, audiobook. I really enjoyed revisiting that story and revisiting those characters, which I hadn't read for 
probably 30 years. Um, so there was a lot of the story and even some of the characters that I had forgotten. Uh, so that was an excellent experience. Highly recommend the stand on audio, even if it's a book that you've um, read in the past. If you liked it, I would recommend you listen to it again on audio because it really does bring um, a new uh, experience to the novel. Uh, very good. And then I finished this short um, piece of fiction. It is Wild Geese by Martha Ostenso. This is a Canadian uh, classic. I buddy read this with Sean over at Sean the Book Maniac. Um, we both really enjoyed this. I think we both gave it four stars in the end. It does suffer a bit from pacing issues at the end of the book. The last um, seven or eight chapters kind of dragged until you get to the climactic final chapter. Um, but this is a first novel and so perhaps that is part of the reason why. So this is a story um, that takes place in the early, early 20th century on the prairie in Western Canada. We're following a farm family. Um, they live in a very, very small community of other uh, homesteaders. And um, this particular family that we're following has a domineering father. He is really keeping uh, his children and his wife as, you know, uh, just workers on his farm like his only concern is making sure they stay on the farm and do all the work to make him a prosperous farmer and we're seeing this story all through the eyes of a um, teacher who is there for the year to teach and is living with the family and so she's sort of our third party observer of this family um, and of the community and the other farmers that live in the area this beautiful nature writing in this story um, there's a lot of uh, family dynamics type writing, uh, some secrets that are being held by different members of the family, and it's just a great story. Um, the feeling that I got from this book is that it's uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder for grown-ups. So if you like the stories of Laura Ingalls Wilder, particularly the story where Laura, um, who as a uh, older teen, travels uh, to be a teacher one winter and lives with uh, a family not her own to do that. If you enjoyed that part of Laura Ingalls Wilder's stories, I think you would like this story for that aspect of it. A really great experience, um, buddy reading that with Sean. I then finished just this weekend, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat and Other Clinical Tales by Oliver Sacks. This is um, a, fi a non-fiction book all about different um, cases that Dr. Sachs uh, was involved with involving neurological disorders and injuries. So um, whether it be uh, people who suffer from autism or people that suffer from brain-induced trauma due to alcoholism or people who were just born with um, different parts of their brains that don't function in a way that we would expect them to function, uh, Oliver Sacks is outlining those issues and how um, advances have been made in the treatment of those issues and how Basically, the overarching theme that I took out of all of these little um, cases was that everybody has something to uh, to give in this world, and but everybody does not have the same capacities to do things. But that doesn't mean that that what a person can give isn't valuable in any case. There's a lot of instances in this book where. People who um, might even be nonverbal can contribute through art, music, um, other interactions with nature, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of connections between um, people who have less function with um, connecting with other humans but might have more function in connecting with art and music or um, spirituality. So really, uh, this was an excellent book. I really enjoyed it. As I don't know if I mentioned, I was buddy reading this with Alba over at the channel Seriella. And we both struggled at times with the uh, terminology and the language Dr. Sachs uses in this book. It's very dated. Um, a lot of the language that he uses or the um, ways he describes these individuals uh, would not be considered um, appropriate today. It would be considered very derogatory, um, but you have to take this book in the context 
when it was written. My particular copy of this book was published in 1998, but the stories within it come from as far back as the 60s. Um, so obviously uh, things are a lot different nowadays than they were in the 60s. So just keep that in mind if you if you start to read this book and you're really getting offended and thrown out of the information that he's trying to relay by the terminology and the language he's using. Just remember the historical context. I think Dr. Sachs is an amazing person and he certainly demonstrates his caring and his um, support of these individuals through the stories he's relating. But sometimes the language that he uses to describe them is just not what we would consider appropriate today. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna take that on. So that's everything that I've finished so far in January. I'm currently listening to the audiobook of Becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, it is fabulous, as everyone has said. She narrates it herself. It's awesome. She is such an incredible woman. Um, she is such a role model for anyone, I think, uh, looking to, you know, if you're looking for role models for strong females or strong women who um, chart a course for themselves and then learn how to either stay the course or that that isn't the course that they wanna be on anymore and change course purposefully, she is really one to um, really one to read. I've only gotten to the part where she's in the beginning stages of her law career and she has just met our future president, Barack Obama, and she's not particularly impressed by him because on the first day she is to meet him, he's late for his appointment, which is awesome. I just love seeing them, both Michelle Obama and Barack Obama in a human light, you know, not as larger than life characters, but as real people. It's amazing. I'm also still reading my Grant biography by Ron Chernow. Um, I haven't made any progress in that since last weekend, so we'll just move swiftly on from there. And then the other book that I'm reading is this book, the novel, The Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin. This is a translated um, piece of fiction and the translator is Anton Herr. I am not loving this book. I'm gonna be straight up and honest with you. I find the writing style to be very um, over the top and flowery and really um, distracting in its uh, ridiculous use of adjectives and descriptions of the characters. But I really love the historical storyline of um, Korea back in the late, late 1800s um, when Korea is trying to uh, come out of its solitary confinement that they impose upon themselves and begin diplomatic relations with the rest of the world. The main characters we're following are French diplomat Victor who falls in love with the court dancer Jin and in the Korean culture at that time, court dancers basically belonged to the king and once they were um, brought into the court, they never left the court unless it was by the king's decree. Um, but this French diplomat falls in love with Jin and basically asks if he can marry her. And the queen, who's um, basically manipulating lots of things behind the scenes arranges for Jin to um, be married to this French diplomat. So we then follow their story um, in Korea and then as they leave Korea and go back to France. I'm now in the section where they're in France. I'm not enjoying this section as much as I enjoyed the section when they were in Korea. Um, and it's just the language really. It's the writing that I'm not enjoying. It's just over the top. As an example, I am on page 220 in this book. That's like 300 and something pages long. It's 360 pages long around. And at least nine times a character's eyes have trembled. That's right, their eyes trembled. I'm pretty sure that's not physically possible for your eyes to tremble. And if your eyes are trembling, perhaps you should see a doctor. 
Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm not even gonna go into the ridiculous sex scenes because Sean the Book Maniac has shared some of those quotes and I'll just leave that for him to, um, if you're interested in some of those quotes, go check them out on Sean's channel when he uh, reviewed The Court Dancer and you'll see what I mean. Um, so yeah, I uh, I am buddy reading this with Doris over at All The Books and uh, we've had some very funny discussions about the language in this book, but which is too bad because the, the actual political part of the storyline is very good. And there are some other parts of it that I enjoy as well, but the, the descriptive language is just too much for me. So anyway, that's where I am right now with my reading. Um, I'm not sure. I'll be picking something else up this week to throw into the mix, and I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. It may be some of my... Um, Book two prize reading, in which case I won't be able to talk to you about it for a while, but um, I will be back uh, to talk about whatever else I'm reading, which will be a lot of Black History Month reads in the next few weeks. And until that time, I'll talk to you later.